Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and you're probably looking at this and going, what in God's name is she making? Well, as you can tell by my little chicken bag here, this is going to be a snack for my girls. Here in South Texas, it got below freezing last night. It is still very, very cold this morning, so I'm going to show you a variation of the chicken oatmeal that I make my girls in the morning. Now you can do all of these ingredients or you can mix and match. What I've done is I filled a plastic bowl. I never like to take glass outside, so this is just plastic. And it's full of just the two minute oats. You can also do unfashioned, old fashioned oats, but what you want is ones that they have no flavor or um, seasoning or anything like that. You just want plain oatmeal like that. I've added some dried mealworms right here and some crushed eggshells. Now remember, these are not store-bought eggshells. These are just the shells that came from my girls. And I've got hot water. And what I like to do in the morning, when the kids and I come out of our rooms in the morning, and I'm gonna start making my coffee, is I get really, really hot water. It's not quite boiling, but you can see the steam. It was pretty close. And I just let the oats sit like that for a minute so they can cook, they can start to absorb the water. And then sometimes I add crushed garlic. Um, I keep this bag is almost empty, so I'm keeping this bag in my kitchen under the cabinet. Um, or I add crushed eggshells. And you can watch my other videos about chicken snacks um, to learn about why I do the different things that I do. Basically, the mealworms or any kind of bug is gonna be an extra protein. And the eggshells, that's uh, giving them their calcium back. Or you can put garlic in it, which um, fresh, just raw chopped garlic is really good for their immune systems. And it helps their bodies um, fight off parasites and help just keep your chickens healthy. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take this outside and I'm gonna show you how I give it to my girls and you can watch how much they enjoy it. I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit and then we'll be going outside. All right, so here we are. We have a steaming warm bowl of <laughs> mealworm and eggshell oatmeal and look who's waiting. Come on girls. Looks like their sister is probably in the nesting box. If you guys haven't seen my amazing chicken sign that my friend made me for my birthday, look at that. She actually got pictures of each of my girls by uh, looking through my Facebook albums. And so there's Dottie and Calypso and Lollipop on our little chicken sign. Okay, come on girls. They're like, lady, quit talking. So it has been, um, there's no wind out here right now, but in South Texas, it has been freaking cold. Um, it'll go you know, above freezing for a little bit and then it goes back down. So here's their big bowl. Again, I try to not bring glass or ceramic or anything breakable outside. I try to only bring plastic. And then I'm gonna dump it into, these are just the little, the trays that you put under a pot so water doesn't go everywhere. And here's why. When I dump this in, and of course they're gonna go nuts. Oh, Callie got a mealworm. There you go, girls. When I dump this in, I'm assuming that my chickens from you know now until this afternoon, they're gonna eat pretty much everything. But of course, there's probably going to be a little bit that's left over. And I have dogs, they're indoor dogs, but of course they come outside a couple of times a day. And then we have squirrels and all kinds of other wildlife here, even though we are just in a neighborhood. And me keeping all of their treats, all of their snacks, anything that's not just, um, you know, sunflower seeds or mealworms, anything that's that's wet or that can mold, I always put their treats in a tray. And that way, whatever they don't eat, I just pick up the tray and dump it out or pick it up and wash it. And that way we don't end up with like big chunks of raw tomato that's going to rot in the yard or anything like that. So now you'll see the girls. I'm going to try to get down here so you can see. Hey. <laughs> you can look at this is Dottie and she's called Dottie because she's a silver laced she looks like she's lacy a Wyandotte and she's getting oatmeal all over her beak I'm gonna see if I can get one of them to do their their little beak wiping technique where they just go back and forth and wipe their beak on the ground that just means they've got something on their face look at these happy chickens Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know that this is Calypso. She's my alpha hen. She's the boss. 
And then Dottie is next on the pecking order. This is Lollipop, and Lollipop is by, by far my smallest girl, and she is also very obviously at the bottom of the pecking order. The girls aren't like abusive or violent to each other, but there is definitely a hierarchy. But as you can see, I can tell at least, Lolly is a lot more puffed up than normal, and that's because, again, any type of chicken that has normal feathers like this, not only are their feathers pretty much waterproof, but they basically puff themselves up and between each feather, they make an air pocket essentially. And then that air is warmed by their body. So like Dottie looks, looks really fluffy this morning and that's just one of their strategies to stay warm. Now, if you've got a different kind of, of chicken, like a frizzle, which is the chickens that their, their feathers um, curl up on the ends, or if you have like a silky one that has um, you know, more of a fuzz than a real feather, they can't do that. So you need to be really careful with those birds as it gets close to freezing because those birds cannot control their body temperature nearly as well. But for my girls, um, it did snow at the beginning of December here in South Texas and they came out in the snow and they were like, oh, okay. And of course I made them oatmeal. So this will keep them nice and warm. I can still see that there's some steam coming off of the, the middle of that, that oatmeal there. I did read the other day too that a good way to tell if your chicken is really feeling too cold is to pick them up and feel their feet. And to see if, they're, if their feet are staying warm. <laughs> they're getting oatmeal all over their face. You like it girls? Oh, there she is cleaning her beak off. <laughs> Got some happy birds. Happy birds. We've put up some new bird feeders, so you may be hearing some some new wild birds as well. We got a little wren house that was built by my dad, which is awesome. We have a black oil sunflower feeder, one of the squirrel buster feeders I'll show you in a minute. We also have an owl box, and it's probably too early for any owls to move in, but we're hoping that soon we might we might have some some little owls. Not owls that would be big enough to be a problem for our girls, but... What is it, Callie Bird? She is so pretty. Her feathers just shine green. And her her copper collar, that I call it. She's a black sex link hen, and her copper collar was not present at all when, she, when we got her. When she was just five days old, six days old. And as her real feathers started to come in, she got that gorgeous copper color. What do you think, girls? Hmm? So again, they're getting crushed eggshell in there. That's, I mean, essentially I'm recycling calcium, right? Because that's from an egg that they laid. So I crushed it really small so it's easy for them to break down. It'll be softened a little bit by the, the hot water as well. They've got a protein boost in there because of the mealworms. Um, dried bugs like mealworms, or I've read that soldier fly larva is, it's physically bigger, but it also has a higher percentage of protein. It's denser in protein. So they've got that in there as well. And then of course the warm oatmeal. That'll be easy for them to digest. Chickens can have garlic. They can have a lot of foods. You want to avoid citrus. You want to avoid um, tough skins on things like avocados you need to avoid onions even though onions and garlic both absorb the sulfur in the soil that's why they have you know the unique smells and tastes that they do garlic does not bother the chickens it's actually very good for them medicinally um, but onion is not so and they don't get a ton of oatmeal i just like to do it on days that i know are particularly cold so i'm going to get out of my own shot here and then real quick, I have one more thing I wanted to show you. Yeah, there's their little musical instrument. Their little, it's sort of a keyboard and it's sort of like a glockenspiel and they do not play it at all. And I'm so heartbroken because I am a music teacher and I wanted to like take my girls on the road, but alas, it was not meant to be. So you've seen before, if you've watched, um, again, I have a, a coop hack video that shows you like how we made the, the feeder and the water that we did and some other things I recommend you do with any coop, but particularly this one by Innovation Pet. Um, and I've talked before on 
some of my other videos just as it's gotten cold that these are called tall kitchen trash bags and they're just the cheap ones you know from our heb but they fit those those squares on um you know each segment of the coop they fit perfectly so i made the girls a little windproof zone right there where it goes around our rubber made storage bin is right there that blocks some of the wind but the problem is you know we the way we placed this is that this is north this way over here behind me so what's happening is the cold wind is going right up in there and we have not built a door to go into the coop because we're just worried about something malfunctioning and the girls can't get out or they can't get in or whatever so what i did is i blocked um you know this panel obviously folds down so i blocked that panel and the upper one with those trash bags the problem is these trash bags i mean they're better than nothing of course but they're not ideal so the other tip i was going to give you just randomly here at the end and dottie's going to get a drink the other thing I recommend is for dog food or cat food or cat litter, or this is um, a dog food bag, but chicken feed, these really thick, durable bags that you get that, you know, they're like almost impossible to rip open, save them because these will oftentimes also fit on your coop really well. And whether it's the rainy season and there's wind and rain, that's what I worry about because then the inside of the coop gets wet and we've had some warping on our wood here from our kit from um, this past hurricane season and all of that insanity. But keep those bags. And so when we, their layer feed bag is almost out. And so I'm just gonna empty those bags and keep them back here in my storage bin. And then as I need, another one to reinforce or hey you know there's i need to block up this side or whatever the case may be i just get my little staple gun and i just mount it around so as you can see the coop is still fully functional obviously there's there's plenty of openness so that we've got air circulation we're not going to have an ammonia build up or anything crazy like that but um it's a tip that i got from I think it was Pam on our San Antonio chicken forum, the backyard chicken forum, is that she basically layered up a whole side of her huge coop for all of her chickens using feed bags that she had been saving. And I thought, man, that is really brilliant. So we were just about out of dog food. So saved the bag and I came out here last night and I felt very self-sufficient and stapled it on there. And so that helped that wind not blow through and then go you see that door that's i mean that's they're there all night even though i close their windows i mean there's nothing else to block that so hopefully they were nice and warm what do you hear girls this is the first morning that i've really heard a lot of i hear a cardinal it's different songbirds i heard our red shoulder hawk but you can see there's our owl box there is the squirrel buster Oop, right there and the wren house is hanging right there I'm gonna get my suet feeder filled up. So hopefully we're gonna have some more birds around this spring also. But I'm Real Simple Mama, and I hope that you have enjoyed our little video, seeing some very delicious, very nutritious chicken oatmeal. As always, you are welcome to ask questions or make comments or give me suggestions in the comments here on YouTube. I always respond within 24 hours and you can find all of our foul content on realsimplemama.com.